Namaskar. I recently came across your YouTube channel and your teachings resonate strongly with me. I currently watch as much as videos as I can and I practice being in the present moment every day and try to get rid of clean my life from any excess objects. Uh, I would like to kindly ask for your guidance regarding practice. I'm suffering from an autoimmune chronic disease and I have tried different practices in the past which I'm not sure what to do with all this knowledge like uh, Reiki practice, Ayurvedic medicine, journaling, tapping, meditation. I feel, I strongly feel I need to abandon them but I also at the same time I feel that this abandonment comes from a restless ego that is constantly looking for new things. When you have something which is called an autoimmune disease, which basically means one doesn't really know what it is in most cases, not in all cases, but in most cases, then it is natural that you'll keep on searching until you find something that gives you relief. That's not something unusual. If one wants to look at it in terms of the ego, one can always find ego in, in everything, even in a stone. But the fact of the matter is that you have an illness. How exactly would you describe your illness? What are the symptoms? The symptoms begin from the gut. It's um, Crohn's disease. It has to do with the gut, but it has spread in different instruments of the body, like the eyes, like the muscles and the bones. Right now, I'm taking classic medicine, which is, I'm afraid, the only thing that has helped me so far with pain and all the symptoms. This is actually something starting out from the gut, right? As yes. far as your question goes, is that an act of ego to be searching for solutions or for new means to rid the body of this pain. I don't think that that would be considered some heavy egoistic approach because it is your duty actually to find out what underlies these, these issues that the physicality of your system is facing. In fact, if you don't do it, then basically you're going against the truth of your system. However, Sometimes less is more, and that is also true. So, you will find a lot more relief in whatever it is, and especially if it is such an autoimmune, um, I don't want to even call them diseases, an autoimmune symptom, let's say, the way to deal with it apart from taking the medicines, because if the medicines are giving you relief, then you take them, even if in the long run they may cause trouble. But in the meanwhile, you can also start to focus on this surrender process. Because what I'm seeing with people who have these autoimmune, various autoimmune symptoms, this practice of surrender seems to be quite miraculous. What I've also observed is that there are people who have physical problems over a long period of time. They move into surrender. The moment they have a relief in the problem, the ego starts to grow. So in a sense, if you can proceed with your surrender practice, clearing up the room of objects which are unnecessary, zipping your lips, not necessarily communicating your plans to others unless they've reached fruition. Taking enough rest, that is a very crucial thing. These are, these are simple things to keep that ego, maybe not at bay, but at least as small as possible. The smaller the ego, the less that body torments you. It is just simply like that. In your case, it will help you for sure. So it's about getting more rest, it's about zipping your lips, not to talk about your plans, about your illness, about whatever you're exploring at that given moment or experimenting with. None of those things to be discussed with A, B, C, D and E. You do it, you figure it out and quietly watch the changes happening.
Because if you tell people about this, of course, they have the doubts and then the doubts bring with them, you know, I don't have to tell you that. So that is very, very, very crucial to keep the lips zipped, not just for you, but for everyone on the satsang. You have a plan, you want to do something, you want to achieve something, achieve it and then inform people about it. Not the other way around, period. It's a non-negotiable approach to life. First you do, then you inform. So that also applies to your problems that you now have. And they will reduce, they have to, because surrender is not something conceptual. It is something in the cells of the body as well, the, the, the material surrender kriyas, the, the bending down, you've seen them in some of the videos, in the Kundalini-related videos. Go and do that Kriya, and do it as often in a day as possible. It's surrendering in the physical, it's surrendering in the emotional, it's, it's bending down, actually bending. And it's surrendering in the conceptual, surrendering in the sense of knowing that this body is an instrument, that it is not the one deciding what's going to happen with it, it's an instrument of the Truth. It is an expression of the Truth. So, as you surrender deeper and deeper, this thing will get better. Of course, if you have something with the gut, then you know gluten is out of question, anything with gluten is out of question, all kinds of dairy products out of question, sugar and sweet, anything sweet, very, very minimal, only when really necessary, if at all that is. Those are the things you know already, I don't have to tell you this. But I'm repeating it because sometimes one doesn't realize that all of this holds together. Spirituality is not a separate thing and then people become ill in their spiritual quest, it doesn't work that way. It has to go hand in hand. So, this is where you are going to move forward in that zipping the lips, getting enough rest, taking care of matter, and doing the surrender kriya to start with. It can't hurt you in any case, so it's better to do it than not to do it. And as far as looking for, you know, different means to cure yourself, yes, of course, you would be interested until you find something that really, really sits. So, it's alright to do that, but first, since you have already come into this satsang and you have already watched the videos, take it up seriously. Take it up, I know it sounds almost banal. One Kriya like that, how is it going to change? It does. One Kriya does change things. There have been people that have reported complete cure from all the problems they had as long as they are in that state. When they move out of the surrender state, back come all the ailments. It's not worth it not to do it. Do it, and then if you want to look further, why not? One, one is, you know, one is not in some spiritual straight jacket because one has found something that speaks to one. One has to be free as a seeker and as a human to just go and explore. It's just to do guru tourism is not a good idea, which means that as a spiritual seeker without a guru who doesn't have a guru. You can go and search and do and look and find and why not? The adventure in Guru Vada is with the Guru and if you don't have a Guru, of course you should feel free to search for these different possibilities and, and cobble them together into, into something which fits for you, you know? So not to have this guilty feeling, oh, I'm searching for too many things and I'm greedy and my ego is too big, that is worse than actually doing what you're doing. Like, it's worse to blame yourself and beat yourself, because that's a bigger form of ego, actually. So relax, chill, it'll be all right. Go into this Kriya, this Kriya is important. Take the inspirations you've found here, institute them in your life, and let it go forward with a sense that you're going to succeed, not with this deep sense of possible failure at all moments, because if you're suffering the way you do, then obviously you have that feeling, you can't be blamed for it. But 
don't give in, that's ego. When there's fear, that's ego. When there's anxiety, that's ego. When there's panic, that's ego. You know, when there is quiet, and you just tell yourself, I will be all right. You start to believe in the strength of the body, and also in the truth underlying it. Yes.